What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to day three of rebuilding the whole rear end on our Evo 8. Day one was a complete teardown. We got everything torn out. Day two, we got all of the bushings pressed out of all of these control arms here. Got everything sandblasted. Every piece you see here is ready for coating. Today, first thing we need to do is bring in some stuff to zinc. Every single bolt that you see right here is all going to be recoded so they're all gonna look brand new i do prefer oem hardware over anything i do have a ton of hardware over there but oem is always the best we had everything replated in the front when we did all that so it's only right that we do it in the rear as well i found a shop that can get it done hopefully within about a week so here's all those pieces there's gonna be some more parts as well brackets for the sway bar and maybe some other bolts as well i think i'm gonna just go through start pulling more stuff off i want to get everything coated i want to get everything plated so Let's uh, move the S2K. I think I'm gonna pull off that driveline real quick. Pull out all the hardware off the driveline. Thinking about dropping the tank and redoing the whole tank. But for now, let's just get every single bolt into a bucket and we gotta go get it dropped off. So let's uh, move some stuff around and disassemble the rest of the car. Well, I guess now we are pulling the tank. It's really not all that hard, it's four nuts and I wanted to get those nuts replated anyway. And plus, why well, have a perfect undercarriage with a rusty gas tank? So we'll pull that later on. For now, I'm gonna go drop this box of hardware off at the zinc. Hopefully we can remember where all of these bolts go. I took some photos, we should be all right. Things always take way longer than usual, so we just now got back to the shop. Let's go ahead and I'm trying to decide if I want to Cerakote stuff today or prep everything out over here for powder coat or move on to some undercoating. I think the current plan with the undercoating is using Raptor Liner because number one, I already have some here that I was going to do the Duramax truck bed with. This stuff right here. And number two, I got that comment a lot on the video a few days ago when I asked you guys for some advice on it just because I've never done it before. But then when I do research, some people say it works really, really, really good for coating on undercarriages and other people say don't use it. But I feel like people say that about every single product, no matter what it is. There's a lot of people that like it, a lot of people that hate it. I don't really know. If anyone's used Raptor Liner on an undercarriage, feel free to drop a comment below. Let me know how it's holding up, how you guys like it. I'm also worried about prep as well. If I don't have to, I don't want to take this thing all the way down to bare metal. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the gas tank out of this thing. I don't think there's much E85 left in it. Well, I guess that's one way to remove your gas tank. It slipped off our tranny jack as soon as I pulled that filler and it fell. Thankfully it fell on the bottom. I was worried it fell on to our radium hanger and possibly destroyed it, but we should be all good. Should probably be a little bit more careful. Almost took me out on the ladder as well. Our freaking pile of parts just keeps growing. I think I wanna spend the day and clean up a ton of stuff that needs to be powder coated. I'm not gonna to touch the CV axles or the rear diff yet because we don't have parts in to get all that stuff rebuilt. But everything else we can definitely work on. We have to press these guys apart. They're of course gonna get some new bearings and seals installed. I was gonna just get a whole new assembly, but bearing was 20 versus like 100 and or $200 assembly. So save some money there. We gotta try and get those ABS sensors out. We have some bushings and that mustache bar right there. 
and then the diff mount bushings are gonna come out as well. So let's start getting everything disassembled, get some things pressed out with our new beautiful Harbor Freight Press. And I should probably put this gas tank somewhere because it's taking up all the space. I'm not having good luck with this gas tank today. Damn it. Hit the bike. We do have to cut the races off of right here the races did get stuck on there but a little bit of cutting hit it with a chisel and hammer it'll crack it right down the center and then you can pop it off so that's pretty easy unfortunately i don't have any more cutoff wheels here i'll have to do this side later on let's go ahead and get these four bushings pulled out and then we can move on to some other fun stuff Both ABS sensors are still stuck, so we're gonna have to just go ahead and break them out and replace them. All of these parts are degreased and cleaned up. From here, everything's gonna go into the stripper tank. That's gonna strip off any sort of paint that's on there. I don't think it's gonna take rust off, but it definitely will take all the paint off. And then from there, they're gonna run all the way over to the sand blaster. Of course, the rear sway and that heat shield will not fit in the blaster, but everything else should fit. I'm gonna have to drop those two big pieces off somewhere else to get powder coated. And in the meantime, I do need to wash the FRS as well because we have a photo shoot for the next Voss and Drop tonight. So I need that car clean. We could shoot with the Evo 10, but I want to shoot with the FRS. That's what he said, too. Uh, I might. Kids, wait, I'm not sure gonna stop. What's up, man? How's it going? Thank you.
so the next Boston drop, I'll let you guys know when it's gonna be here shortly, but I just wanna show you guys two of the like 14 products we're dropping, 15, 16. A lot. That's a lot. Either way, it's a lot. I gotta show you guys this one because it's my. This, I think it's my favorite shirt. Bang your Boston logo on the front. Do it for the back. This is too good. So we got two of these dropping, two different colorways. If you're reading this, your car's too slow. This is gonna sell in like probably 3.8 seconds. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but it's a, it's a pretty much a black on black, black Boston giant logo on a black shirt. Absolute banger. And then the next one I wanted to show you, it's just a very clean, simple design. Straight up Boston logo on the front, beautiful design on the back. She flows well. Look at that, hand sewn. Right here in Spokane, Washington. I'll have a drop date coming soon. Probably tomorrow we'll know. Okay? Okay, let's go get, let's go get back to work now, boys. <laughs> yeah, let's drink some fireball. Check this out. So my birthday's tomorrow, by the way. Happy birthday, Devin. One of my boys swung by, shout out to Greedy. 30. Should I take, you want to take a fireball shot? Oh wait, you can't. I know, I would, Shit. but I can't. I might have to slam one real quick, bro. We got 30 little shots of fireball and was a 24 pack of Blue Moon. Fuck it, I'll do it for the vlog. <laughs> I actually really like, I enjoy fireball. Is that I like it too. Don't drink and drive, but you can drink and work, right? Is that illegal? Not yet. Well, we're still free. Mm. Ah, it tastes like water. <laughs> I feel like my face is on fire right now, bro. <laughs> Tastes like water. It's so warm. Holy shit. It's not very good warm. <laughs> So like I expected, the stripper tank did nothing for rust, but it ripped off the paint just fine. So everything else is gonna be sandblasted. It'll go much quicker now that there's no paint or powder on these parts. But damn, they are, look how crusty these things are. Like how is this so rusty? I'm actually not going to be sandblasting these parts tonight. I wanna go ahead and knock out all of the aluminum pieces. So we're gonna be laying down some Cerakote today. It's gonna be satin aluminum. I think it's H151. All of these parts from here over is gonna be gassed out in the oven for one hour at 350 degrees. I would do these two pieces, but our oven is too small. I know I need an upgrade. One day we will. You don't have to do the gas out cycle, especially stuff like this where it's not like an engine part. I'm not super worried about doing the gas out phase. Obviously it's better to, but if it doesn't fit like this guy here, not a big deal. Yeah, let's get all these parts in the oven, 350 degrees, one hour, pull them out, let them cool down, and all of this stuff is going to be looking like that here within the next few hours. Well guys, we have a slight problem, something I completely forgot about. The H151 Cerakote is an oven cure. I was so used to doing air cures. Thankfully, this bar here fits in the oven, but this guy does not fit in the oven. So we are gonna have to have this Cerakoted by somebody else with a bigger oven, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. We can do all those pieces. Unfortunately, we just cannot get this guy here done. And then I just realized that we have a broken bolt in this control arm, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that bolt out before we cerakote these parts. I ended up running out of time yesterday to get these parts Cerakoted, and I also decided to Cerakote these guys silver as well. I was gonna powder coat these black, but I know they're supposed to be silver. We're gonna go ahead, cut this race off. I just went and picked up some cutoff wheels. So let's get that race off there, get these two pieces sandblasted, get them in the oven for the gas out cycle, and we can get everything coated. Okay, we have the wheel hubs in the oven right now. I'm gonna start Cerakoting all of the other pieces and I'm realizing this is gonna take probably all day just because we can't put everything in the oven at once, of course. Our oven is tiny. I know, I should probably upgrade. So this is gonna be an hour in the oven. This is gonna be an hour in the oven. Those are gonna be an hour in the oven. Those are gonna be an hour in the oven. So that alone is like three or four hours of bake time. Thankfully, we did all the gas out stuff last night. I'm gonna try to get everything done today. We have the supplies laid out here. 
This is H151 satin aluminum from Cerakote. Here's the Part B catalyst, our little mixing cup, and our scale so we can get the ratios right. I believe it's 18 parts of this to one part of that. And I just go by grams on the scale. Process is very easy. Being that they're already gassed out, I'm gonna go ahead and hose them down. I'm gonna go ahead and hose them down with brake cleaner and then blow them off with the compressed air. We're gonna spray them out, let the Cerakote sit for 15 minutes, and then the parts go back in the oven for one hour. Hello? What up, birthday bitch? <laughs> Beautiful cup we have here. She uh, she got a little hole in the bottom of it. Nice. So the first parts just came out of the oven and quite honestly, they look like shit. There's a ton of light areas. Our Harbor Freight gun is not good at all. They work good for like one time. That's what I noticed with these stupid things. The second piece we did, I hope it turns out good. I feel like everything that could go wrong today with this project is going wrong. We just ran out of Cerakote, so we can't get any more arms done. We have four pieces, six pieces left. These four arms are here and then we have the two hubs as well. But thankfully the pieces that we did get done turned out really, really nice. I just did the second coat on these four arms. That one arm is almost done in the oven. Then I'm gonna put these four back in, let them fully cure. So here's a little side by side of a blasted, but not coated versus a coated piece. You can see how much better the Cerakoted piece looks. Bobby's coming to look at my car cause she hasn't seen under it. Go look at the ass end of her and let me know what you think. You ever seen something torn apart so much? Oh, what the heck? I've never seen this in my life. You like it? Um, don't necessarily like it. Super glad I went ahead and redid these forearms because now they turned out perfect. That is gonna look so nice. If you're wondering why we coated these pieces, we could have blasted them with glass bead and they would look really, really nice. The main reason I wanted to Cerakote them is for corrosion resistance. And of course it looks amazing as well. 15 years later down the road, I guarantee you, these control arms will look just how they do right now. If you guys want to pick up this exact Cerakote that we are using, I'll have it linked down in the description box below. Kind of sucks that we could not get everything done today, but such is life. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Also, big thank you to everybody who wished me a happy birthday on Instagram. I tried to get back to you all you guys, but it's been really, really difficult. Just know I appreciate it. It means the world to me. Wouldn't be where I am without you guys. Peace out, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow.